There are several areas of concern. New devices should be secure by design and should remain secure when they come to market. Uh, On-market devices should be patchable and should receive patches as quickly as possible, but securely. Um, and legacy devices, those that cannot be patched, uh, and this is in accordance with IMDRF's definition, are a, a, a tremendous problem and we need solutions for this. Industry and regulatory bodies need to talk about what can be done to reduce the risks of having outdated systems uh, that are in use and can be attacked, but can't be repaired and don't have protective measures. FDA in their RTA uh, policy for cybersecurity is saying you need to submit a pre-market notification or application with information associated with cybersecurity. It's about the presence of the information in the submission, not about the adequacy. If it's not in there, you're going to be put on hold while you fill in the blanks for FDA. FDA is saying that the manufacturers need to include the information at the time of submission. It needs to be complete. FDA is really serious about this. This is their opportunity to reduce the number of files that come into them with significant holes in content. Uh, they're not interested in gently guiding manufacturers to the submission. Um, if the manufacturer thinks that they're ready and they ignore the guidance and the statute and they submit something that is full of holes, FDA is going to return it to them and ask them to fill the holes in before FDA starts their review, period. FDA in the past has tried to use the carrot and be nice and, and incentivize and interactive uh, and they've spent a massive amount of time and effort doing that and I don't think it achieved the results they're looking for, which is secure by design and a complete submission. So they're taking the gloves off to some extent and now that they have statutory authority that there's no more arguing about what needs to be there, manufacturers just need to comply to design security in and to submit a complete package. So these rules have teeth. The final version of the pre-market guidance does not have a lot of significant changes from the 2022 draft really. The key language changes really hint at FDA's posture though. FDA added a section entitled a secure product development framework may be one way to satisfy the quality system regulation. Uh, they're hinting that if manufacturer uses an SPDF, this is a really solid way to handle all of the obligations that they have, all of the requirements under the new statutory authority and under the quality system regulation itself. Uh, they've updated the vulnerability management plan to slightly different language. It's now a cybersecurity management plan, which hints it's a, a stronger, more forceful push for a total product lifecycle approach to cybersecurity and really evaluating in the pre-market submission what the manufacturer's plans are for post-market management. A lot of people have misunderstood this point and it is critical. They are evaluating your post-market processes in the pre-market. This is very important to have a plan and to not try to handle post-market issues in an ad hoc basis. It's also emphasizing that this is not easy, so planning reduces the risks of a chaotic response. Everyone wins from a good plan. Well, now that October has come, the ESTAR is the required format for submission of a 510K. It's still optional for a de novo, uh, but it is the required format for a 510K, which means that FDA expects every 510K submission to come to them in the appropriate ESTAR template, which automatically generates certain pieces of language and, and prompts the manufacturer to fill those in. So. Manufacturers should test out the eStar if they're getting ready to submit through it, if they've never done it before, um, and try out example language for a future submission to make sure they understand what FDA's expectations are. Adapting to the new requests will mean planning 
uh, for more time for the regulatory affairs team, uh, the quality assurance team, the cybersecurity and, and software and, and product development teams to work cybersecurity comprehensively into the device design and into their quality system documentation. This is going to require people and companies to adapt. Change is hard. Not being confident in your approach is especially hard. If you're not sure what to do about adapting to the new final guidance and the statutory requirements, you should ask for help when you're not sure about the right way to update your approach. Uh, you should read the guidance and request pre-submission or QSUB meetings with FDA if you're concerned that you're not implementing adequate controls or if you're worried about how you're performing threat modeling or any of the other aspects that are described in the guidance or in the statute. FDA is available to answer questions. That's the whole purpose of the pre-submission program. So it depends. For experienced manufacturers, there may be processes that they need to modify. There may be culture changes that are needed to truly implement cybersecurity into the total product lifecycle. For newer manufacturers, especially smaller organizations, these companies may not have adequate staffing to cover cybersecurity. They're going to need to contract out some of the work and engage with experts to ensure their approach will meet FDA's expectations. If they fail to do so, that can lead to delays in the form of hold letters from FDA, which add anywhere from 90 to 180 days to the timeline for review and slow your approach to getting to market. Collaboration has been crucial to ensuring that the regulations that are created are not impossible to implement. We know that FDA engaged with a wide variety of stakeholders and industry while working on the language for the Patch Act. We believe that everyone walked away with an improved outcome from that collaborative effort, so it's very important. We also believe that it would be hard for companies to shift gears rapidly and it will be hard to hire adequate expertise into the space. There will be a lot of training to bring cybersecurity experts up to speed on the risk management and quality system frameworks associated with medical devices. This is not the same environment as banking or automotive security and safety, although those are also highly regulated. <laughs>